I want to be positive. You know what I mean? I don't want to be negative. Man, I want to be positive, Good, bro. Been How working. you doing? What up, boy? You doing great? What's happening? What's happening with you? What up, boy? A new. Whew. Is that Greek John? Well, I'm tired of it. Uh, <laughs> take a second. We, we, this we. HR implemented a, a, a late rule. A late Fine. Rule. Hey, I'll, man. I'll be late, though. I'll be late. Yeah. We got it. We're going to give him a pass. I'm HR. Hey, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm human resource. What we shot. love what you bring to the table. Yeah. Then I did this thing with some AFL legend, so Australian Football League. Rugby. Like he, rugby. Okay. He's like 6'4". Mm. Yeah, he big. Oh, he was a big old dude, man. And we oh, had to, good. they gave us cars. We was opening cars like we was on the Grammys. Oh, and, to give him awards? And it said a word. No, it said like nerves. And then we had to talk about because he played in two championships. I played in two. Yeah. You know, y'all never played in them. So y'all don't know nothing mm. about that. Can you play Go the ahead and start the show, man. <laughs> the championship. We, we get hit like that. Right? We're used to it. <laughs> we, we're used to it. It's a little, uh, you know, none that a spin move can't solve. Nah, listen, I miss <laughs> make, you. Make a miss. <laughs> hey, oh, man. Yeah, they got me. <laughs> Freddie T, I'm not tripping on that. I told you, man. You best I ever play. I'm not, I have I have no problems admitting. So I would miss them probably. I'd have missed him. But when I catch you though, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Suspicious. And you gotta you gotta strategically miss. You gotta miss with people around, so it's not as bad. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. See, but that's what family do. We we can go back and forth. Yeah, and it's definitely love. Get to it. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, Welcome to the pivot. Uh, appreciate thank it. you, fellas, man. I yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you. Uh, I've been excited about this all day, which is why I was even more upset that I had to work so much, man, because I didn't want to miss it. Uh, Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, former teammates, now rivals in the NFC North. Freddie T, Channing, I'm RC. Welcome to the pivot. To our partners, Happy Dad, we appreciate you. To all the people that continue to support, man, like I think you just need to jump right into it. The first thing is this. Just reading up on both of your stories, you know, you guys have gone through different things. There's different depth to both of you. You know, Aaron, you know, growing up in El Paso, having a twin brother, your mother and father being military, you choosing to go to BYU and the different things that you went through there. When you guys were teammates, and I'll start with you, Aaron, what was that relationship life? like with all those past experiences? Uh, it was like I got a brother right off the jump. Uh, we was together 24-7, apartment right next to each other. Uh, even in year three, we both moved and moved right next to each other again. Uh, so we, we was always together, uh, my roommate when we first got there, camp roommate every year. So it was it was like having my twin brother. It was a little hard for me because, like you said, I've always been around my twin brother, and that was my first time leaving him. I played together with him in college. But I had him right there with me, and I, I knew him before we came in. And so it just it just worked out perfect. And then we play in the same position. We together 24-7, meetings, eating, hot tub, whatever it is. We was together 24-7. So it's like, damn, I, I, got, a, I got a brother, like not, not just a teammate, but I got a brother for life out of this. Well, how was that for you too, man, knowing he feels this way about you, but the way that y'all lives came together in Green Bay? Man, I honestly just give thanks to God of just how this, how we intertwined and our face came together, how, how we started our beginnings together, and just being at Radio Row, chilling, <laughs> and like just not knowing what's happening, just being f f a little rookies out there, and just having fun. But having him made the experience much easier, just because you have somebody there, you're not really by yourself. You got somebody you could talk to, you could lean off of one of each other, give the energy to one of each other, and I, I just love Aaron because he's just so, he's, he give me the positive energy that I need. This Even the, when he. It's because this is the energy like guy. So he'll give you the energy and then he'll look at you. You got <laughs> to reciprocate it. You got to give it back to him. I never see Aaron so angry or anything like that. It's just always a fun time. And I love having Aaron as my, my brother. And, and for us to be playing together is great. Right. He's just, <laughs> uh, First time you met him, you had to be like, this joker's weird. I said, Most definitely. Yeah, he crazy. <laughs> he, he, he on the floor dancing, everything. Like, doing dance I ain't never seen before. I'm like, 
and I got him start. I got him to start dancing. Yeah, he got me to start dancing. He at one point he had the whole team dancing. Mm -hmm. 2020, 2019. Oh, we was getting loose. He had the whole team dancing. We warming up, dancing, and he got some uh, contagious energy, and that's what it is. Uh, Everybody loved being around him. Two backs being drafted to the same team, same year. Fifth round of 182. Yes, sir. And and 134 Mm -hmm. overall. Uh, I'm sure there are moments where you guys will look at each other and say, I got to compete against this guy. One of us might not be here. You know, it's a crowded meeting room. Or did you guys go the other way and say, we got to look out for each other? How was that dynamic? It was more so we got to look out for each other, you know, uh, make sure we all, we all know the plays uh, when one of us in. So you could just go out there and play fast and then, you know, um, let the best man win. Was, that's really what it come down to. But uh, when you got somebody who pushes you, he, he go out there and do a, do a rep or break a run. Then I'm like, I line up. I'm like, oh, I got I got to go. I ain't got no choice, you know. If I, if I want to be here, I, I got to get in the end zone now. So just having somebody like that to continuously push you and bring out the best in you, like you, you can never relax. You can never get comfortable because you got another capable back right there who, who wants your job. So... This is, I think is, I call it positive competition. Like I, we could talk, you know, talk that shit together and be like, yeah, I'm about to give her a hundred. What you gonna do today? You know what I mean? Or, you know, like do a big run, look at him, be like, hey, what you want today? When you get in the game, what you gonna do? But it's just, that's just all I'm trying. It's iron sharp as iron. Sharp There's sharp. no bad blood. We know it's a business at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, we still playing a, a kid's game and I'm grateful to do it with my brother. And it's just, when you get out there, you know, make a good play, look at him, go make a good play, let's do it, you know what I mean? It's your it, turn, what's up? <laughs> I think it's better when we competing and we all, when we both doing good, it makes it harder for the team to have to choose, you know, who, who gonna be the man. But after that, it doesn't matter if one of us leave, cause we know we gonna get picked up, we gonna get, go somewhere. Case in point, Detroit. But it went hard. No. It went hard to leave. Oh yeah, cause y'all say y'all was together every day, all day. Man, I was, I was sad. I was, I was dummy I was, sad. Sad. It, it, yeah. it really hit me the, uh, oh. the first day OTAs when we when we came back, and I'm looking around. I'm like, damn, I knew Jamal wasn't gonna be here, but Jamal really not here. Like, ain't nobody talking in him, but dancing. Like, I ain't hear nothing in the like in the meeting room. It's all uh, younger guys, like new guys. So it's like, man, me and Jamal used to sit here. Chop it up, like have a good time. And that's when it like really hit me. And I'm like, damn, my dog's gone. Like, but Jamal's taught me things in that time. Like, he was he brought energy to the team. I can, I can, I can be that. Mm-hmm. He's he's gotten me out of that shell where I'm I feel comfortable enough to crack a joke, dance, or whatever it may be to to bring that energy to the team. It's like, I tell you that for sure. And then now we old It was your decision. Too. I get that. You- <laughs> it's a business, but this is my brother. Like, I just be like, man, so I, you I gotta me go for they, me. They I kidnapped go for you me. and took no, no, you no, 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 up. No, no. I gotta go for me because I know what's best for me. But at the same time, this is my brother. I wish I could play with him, but I gotta go for me and do what's best for me. And that's why I love him so much. And everybody in the family too, they understand that it's just, what's best for me and they love me for, cause they want to see me do good. Right. Yeah. And so, but it's, it's good now cause I get to see them two times. <laughs> <laughs> I get to see them, we still get to talk and do all that. It's you know? funny cause uh, JT, Jason Taylor, mm-hmm. I played with him in Miami. He went to play for the Jets for a year. Mm-hmm. And then we was kind of, you know, we ain't saying that, we was kind of like, damn, man, go play for the division rivals right like, there. Damn, it's like yeah. that. And then the contract <laughs> differences came out of what the Jets off and the Dolphins. We was like, oh, yeah, bro, go, go, oh, go yeah. see why you went over there. <laughs> when that one year, got a little check and came right back down to Miami. But I see what you're saying. Like, you'd be, hey, oh, man, I played with you for seven years straight. How much is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 I'm your homeboy. I ain't your teammate no more. <laughs> yeah, so to take it back a little bit further, you know, this is obviously a little different having both of you on, but I wanted y'all to touch on y'all relationship first and in order to get to that point where you understand what it's like to have a brother or you cherish a relationship, you have to have other relationships in your life that got you there. You're from a military family. Your father, uh, Alvin, Alvin Sr., is you. You got a twin brother. And you said that your pops was just, he was on y'all. You know, your AAU coach. And, you know, you said sometimes you go to the crib and it's like, yeah, pop, like, I know I messed up, but, like, why we got to talk about that now? Speak a little bit to what your father meant to you and how he helped build this man that could be considered a brother as as well as a great competitor in the same room with Jamal. My dad's everything. He's my, my rock, but uh, I'm 
definitely thankful for those hard times. You know, as a kid, you don't you don't understand it, uh, or even as a teenager, you don't understand it. You you think your parents telling you something to, to get up under your skin, but they really got the your best interests in mind. And my dad had told me from from is this if this is what you want to do, I'm gonna push you to be the best at it. So I told him, yeah, this is what I want to do, but you don't understand that's what comes with it. It made me tougher, uh, really. Like, now I feel like I can get through anything, resilient. But I feel like a, li a little bit of that is also with the military mm -hmm. upbringing, having to move around, adapt to different cultures, uh, make new friends, go prove yourself every time you move uh, on the field. So different things like that. But one thing my dad told me when I was younger was we had more God-given talent naturally once we, when we were younger. But he was like, that, that talent gap gonna close. And when that talent gap close, the only thing that's gonna separate you is the work you put in. So, And it stood true, you know, once you get to middle school, high school, really high school, you start seeing some, some athletes doing the same things as you, and then you get on the college football field, everybody can do the same thing as you. People can squat more than you, people running faster. So what separates you? And, and that was the biggest thing. And, and then just seeing how my, my dad took everybody in, like, like Jamal as well, just there for everybody, like, just a big open heart, uh, wants to see all kids do great and push them in any way they can. So um, it's just a, a great role model for me. You did a lot of things about your father passed and they made a, a big ordeal about your little, the vial. Oh yes sir, yes yeah. sir, a little football. Uh, I carry, I had a necklace on, so I actually had like, uh, like this and then a little small skinny chain and it had the football on. When I went to school, I went to go pull this out and I accidentally yanked on it. And I, could, I felt it drop in the end zone. And I'm like, I'm trying to hold on to it. But, you know, you got everybody coming up to you after you score. And then I get to the solid. And I'm told him, I'm like, Dang, I, dropped, I dropped my dad's ashes. It was in a football. And I start opening my jersey. Couldn't find it. And they're like, don't worry about it. We'll find it. We'll find it. And I, I, I was thinking about it for a second. I'm like, if my dad want me to drop him anywhere, lose him anywhere, it's going to be in the end zone. Mm, so yeah. I was like, I'm, maybe I should go in every every end zone and spread my dad's ashes yeah, or something like that. That's so dope, man. thank you to our trainers. Uh, they end up going out there like 2 o'clock in the morning and finding it. And uh, I was just like in awe. And uh, that just speaks a lot of our su support staff up there at Green Bay. That was a 4 TD night, though. Yes, sir. And that, that was actually crazy because we got knocked out of the playoffs at home against Tampa Bay. And... I got hurt, and that was the last game my dad seen me playing. So that was my first game back at home. And uh, just, I could feel him there with me that night. It's ironic. Well, that was home opener against Detroit. Yes, right? sir. Se second touchdown, it drops. And uh, I, I want to make sure I mention this right. The trainer's name was Flea. Yes, sir. That Flea. Founder. You got him like scooters. And, yes, sir. I got him and his family dope. some uh, bird scooters. It's just a, a appreciation a gift, you know. It's something that means so much to me that you can't put a value on. So I also got them like ne a necklace like this with their family, uh, their whole family on it and gave them to each one of them as well. So, uh, you know, something I'll, I'll be forever be thankful for. I got it. Uh, when I'm not playing, I give it to my mom so she can keep track of it and keep it for me. And then even Green Bay, they made a pocket now in my yeah. jersey and I just drop it in there and it's Velcro and closes. So yeah. got it on me every game. Man, that's dope. You hit the genetic lottery though. The genetic right. lottery. Right. Your parents <laughs> athletes, right? Mine? Yeah. yeah. My mom went to track. Well, ran she ran track at UCLA. Yep. And my dad just played basketball anywhere. But <laughs> <laughs> he's just big. <laughs> yeah. For you, you make the choice to go to BYU. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows about the honor code mm -hmm. at BYU. It was a blessing that they ain't never recruit me or that's the school I had to go to because there's some things that they ask you to do over there that they ain't asking you to do at LSU. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you, you make that decision, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, can't drink underage, obviously. Mm -hmm. You did that. Mm -hmm. Can't have sex. Mm -hmm. And you did that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you basically, I mean, you basically probably did once or twice what Channing lived his entire life at Florida doing pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah, you ain't like bad, brother. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much every day. When you're going through that adversity because of, of a decision you make, because you understand where you're going to school. But any, at least my, myself, from 18 to 21, you know, those were things you would do and you wouldn't really think about it. It was part of growing up and dealing with that adversity of what those things put you through those punishments, those suspensions, those expulsions. How are you able to get through that? And did you ever question yourself at any time and ask, why am I here? Oh, all the time. But 
at the same time, I feel like I was meant to go there just because I knew I'd be good for, it would be good for football for sure. I knew I could do on the field. It was the off the field thing that I had to learn more about because I was already a, a introverted in the house type of kid. So I really didn't understand social life really, especially in college, but it's BYU. So it's like an adult high school. That's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> being there, I, I learned a lot. Just, I learned a lot about, honestly how I am now, just go about your business. You know, don't tell your business to everybody because mm -hmm. everybody ain't your friend. People at BYU, trifling. Some of them are trifling. They really tell on you just because they think it's going to get them closer to the Lord, which is crazy. <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> which is crazy to me, which is like, telling on me isn't going to help you get closer to God. That's all I, that's all I want to say. <laughs> but they did that. But, I did, but and it's still like, yeah, it just taught me to just, you know, watch people. Trust my ninja instincts on how I feel about somebody. If I don't feel good about it, it's a reason why I don't. And that's just how BYU was just for me. It, it made me go when I wanted to go have fun. Honestly, I was in my house. I was drinking Hennessy and apple juice. <laughs> I was playing Call of Duty. And then when it was time, I, I lived right next to a, a skating ring. And I just go to the skating ring. And I just be in there. Chilling and enjoying my life. <laughs> and then I go home. <laughs> and that's literally how I lived my college life for yeah. most of the four years. But I did get in trouble just dealing with certain people I shouldn't have dealt with in my experience. And from there, once I got kicked out, I literally was just chilling for a whole year until my last year. I got kicked out my, it was literally supposed to be my senior year, mm -hmm. but I got kicked out. And then for the whole semester, I could have I could have went back winter semester. So. No football, but I could have came back. Um, but my uncle now, he my trainer that live here now, we not blood, but he offered out to me, well, to my mom first and was like, hey, your son, do you want him to come out? He could train, we could get him better. And I told him I need to, so I was coming back. And so my mom was like, it's your decision, what you want to do? I'm like, sure, let me, let me just go out there and see how it's like. And then me and my uncle started getting closer together it made me emotional just because of how far we got and how close we are right now. Um, we got so much in common and I finally understand how it felt to have somebody who literally doesn't want nothing from you, but just wants you to be the best you and literally would do anything to keep you protected, won't let nobody take advantage of you mm -hmm. and just want to see you be the best you. Don't want nothing from you, but at the end of the day, he's my trainer. So I'm gonna take care of him for taking care of me. And that's what I've learned so much from just being at BYU is, and just take care of the people who are, take care of you, keep people around you who are genuine and they really don't want nothing from you. That's what I just appreciate about my brother here. Yes. I appreciate about just genuine people in general is you're not doing the nice thing because you're expecting something at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's what irks me the most is when people get around me and they doing nice things, but they have an agenda at the end of it. Yeah. That's why when somebody give me a compliment, first thing I, or anything, somebody give a compliment, what do you want? What, what do you want from me? <laughs> That's the first thing that happened in my mind, because yeah. it's just, just so much just happened when, especially in the, the sport that we play, people yeah. just, you know, they could check our money. Like, it's yeah, weird to crazy. see <laughs> yeah. you go on Instagram and people talking about how much money you make it. Yeah. But, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just weird to me. And I'm just like, I'm just a regular person like everybody else. I'm just trying to make a living, just so I happen to play football. And, you know, I love it, but just having genuine people around you who understand you that you're not a bank. Yeah. yeah. You're not somebody's supply to make their life easier unless they're your kids, you know, taking care of them or your family. You do what you want. But I'm not somebody's bank. I'm Jamal Williams. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. a nerd. <laughs> I'm but Jamal but Williams the ninja man. It sounds good to say. Yeah. But the more money you make, the more situations gonna come up and like that's this. That's why I hate. The but you got you like no you got it. No you got you got upset by it, bro. You might as well let it go. I can't. Like, you know, like you said, he signed ninety million dollar deal. Everybody in the world knows. I hear that, but I ain't getting that all at once. You understand? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm still working like everybody else. I get that. I'm working. I understand. Help people when you can help them. But I'm, you know, I'm still one world. man. They, they see what the number on the contract saying, they think you get that right away when you chilling. sign and all of that. So yeah. I see where you're coming from. But yeah, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I want to help when I can. I help my community all the time in the IE. Goodies forever. If you want to go, Goodies Foundation. Give back to the IE if you can. 
Because yeah. that's just what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help out people who need it. You know what I mean? Not people who want something from me because they can get it because they know me or we blood or they just got my number for no reason. We all got this. We, we yeah. all been through it, bro. I know. I know y'all. And I, yeah. and I feel more comfortable talking to y'all about it because I, I feel comfortable because everybody understands right. what I'm right. talking about. And not, there's not many times I get to talk about stuff that That's what this irritates space is for, me. bro. Yeah. yeah. That irritates me a lot about what's happening in my life. You know, people just see smiling Jamal and me going to work and that's just because football is my peace. Football is a place where people can't get to me. I'm on the field, you in the stands. You can't get to me if you wanted to. Run to me if you want. Security gonna be on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm running like this too. Security, get him. <laughs> like you can't get to me. Football is my peace, but yeah. I'm still working on just me in general, just outside of football and learning how to be in more peace, be in my peace zone outside of football besides being in my room, playing video games, anime, and learning how to have fun with my brother. He, be, he understands, because I be, I be in the house. Don't mess with me, leave me in the house. If you want to hang out with Jamal, you got to go to his crib. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go See that crib, you I'm, coming, I'm coming over, dog. Said, that's, that's crazy, though. Man. You, oh, you want to sit in your house? I love you don't it. Be I'm by content. yourself. You don't want to be. You want to ride and hang oh, out and no. go oh. to the mall. Walk oh through. no! You, are you a Chan, you're you're 16 bro. years old? Are you a germaphobe or something? My social limit is very low. Like this right now is too many people. <laughs> <laughs> like it's what, low. Why? You a good dude. You funny. You. I don't like talking. I want to sit down and chill. <laughs> Let me chill. That's it. We talk every day. And it, when we go to a, on a game on Sunday, how many people do you talk to? Think about it. Hundreds. Exactly. I want to go home. I'm trying not to cuss because I'm getting it. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go home. I know. I'm just trying to go. Channing's home. that uncle that uh, you kind of screen the call. Yeah. I'm not trying to talk to him today. Uh, <laughs> That, he's crazy, man. But both you guys, both you guys, you, you you play the game with extreme passion. I love, I enjoy watching both you guys play and looking at your dynamic, sharing the backfield. The question you asked me earlier about sharing the carries uh, and, and not having animosity, just friendly, positive competition. But both you guys also have signature images that, that you come with. You had the sombrero. Sombrero. Yeah, yes, sir. Sombrero. That's your attack. Could you yeah, appreciate could you, it. Yeah, I've seen that in your anime and you have different celebrations. Speak to the sombrero. What, where did that come from? Are you trying to roll your R? Sombrero. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> I got it right. Hey, tell, you tell about seeing cheese. Fred, <laughs> where did you just go? <laughs> I went to El. I'm trying you to go to El Paso. To no, he went to Guatemala. Zambrara. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, see what I see what I mean. You good. We can't even do a show with this guy. <laughs> he goofy. But no, could you, could you speak to that and enlighten the viewers? Definitely. So I'm, I'm from El Paso, Texas, and then we was going back to play Dallas. My first game ever in Texas. I'm going to have all my family there. And uh, she was my girlfriend at the time, but my son's mother, she was like, I bet you won't wear a sombrero. I'm like, why not? I, I like, we we got mad sombreros in the house. Like, that's we grew up. Like, we go on vacation and pick up sombreros, and it was our thing. And uh, I'm like, why not? But I didn't have any in Green Bay with me. So I went to Party City and got like a little costume one, but it matched my outfit. I had a good game. I think I went for like 125 and like a touchdown or something like that. And a uh, Packer fan hit me up, Senior Ortiz, and he was like, hey, you want a real sombrero? Yeah. So he sent me a Packer, Packer colored one, and I've been wearing a sombrero ever since. And it's crazy. I was talking to my mom about it. Uh, I was like, before you really, you, you see me, Senior Ortiz says, the guy, you see his sombrero in the, in the stands. You wouldn't really see any others. But now, like I can, I can go out there and warming up, or the middle game, look out in the stands and see people in, in some barrels in the stadium, and I, I just I, that's love to me. That's that's yeah, love. That was week five of your rookie year, right? Yes, sir. Uh, 125 against the Cowboys, the team you grew up against, one of your favorite running backs, Emmitt Smith's old team. Yes, sir. After Jamal went out a bit, and Jamal speak to anime because a second ago yeah. or earlier off camera, yeah. you told me in Channing, 2K Madden and Call of Duty was ninja games. Not like kicking ninjas, <laughs> but ninjas. Hey, that's, so that's what he meant when he said that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, right. okay. Yeah, I do play those. So, <laughs> with, 
<laughs> I do play the one. Right. So the, the evolution of <laughs> anime, because yeah. he calls it weird. But last episode. Why you call it weird? Why? Why it's weird. Because you want to watch it? Grown men. He's just chanting. Staring at pencil drawings of pencil Chinese drawings. talking people. How they run, it's Chan? Crazy. Please. With the j j j <laughs> <laughs> I'll run just like I that just in high school, too. I don't get it. Well, you I don't get, get it. it. Just how a grown man can watch the cartoons all day. <laughs> Same way you can watch, you know, rappers' music videos all day. Why well, do you think I watch rappers' music videos all day? <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not even saying black and white and whatever. I'm just, it's, you uh -huh. know, like, I don't play, I don't what play. What about it? What you don't understand? What part? I don't play shoots and ladders no more. Shoots and ladders? Because I kind of grew I don't play Monopoly too much. Elevated for me. I elevated. <laughs> what does this have to do with anime? Anime it is anime. To is like, explain, anime. explain to people anime. why you like it so much. Anime okay. is kid, and now you grow up. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, explain it again. Yeah, or, you was kind of late to this one. Let me let you know. <laughs> it was very late to everything. You good. <laughs> <laughs> so the anime, people think it's kid, but it's, it's not really kid. It's more of, there's a whole bunch of story modes. There's serious modes. There's... There's comedies, there's cooking, it's all whole. Is the Boondocks? Uh, yeah, anime? but it's, you know, it's a black version. But, I watched the Boondocks, yeah. I guess. It counts. Anime. Hey, it counts. You, said it, you said it. But it counts, though. But it's just like, it's I guess the, the way the faces is drawn He likes it, though. I like Boondocks. <laughs> you yeah. Boondocks, wow. Comedy. But anime is basically just art that's in cartoon mode. It's still in the serious adult mood. You know what I mean? There's, there's some anime that's crazy that's literally just for adults. Like, you will like it, I promise you. But... On some of them, is for me, I get more principles and morals from them. I get the principles of, like I gave the example of Naruto. Mm -hmm. Naruto was a young kid who basically was getting, he basically, everybody was calling, calling him an outcast. They didn't mess with him in the village, basically. So he's a young kid in the village, in a village of people who don't like him. You would think he would come up to become a bad person. He'd be evil, he'd be angry. He wouldn't like people. But at the end of the day, Naruto wanted to be president of the village and let people know that he's not a monster. He's not somebody to be afraid of. He's literally a genuine, nice person who just want to help other people out. Some people, sometimes he's going to have to beat them up. <laughs> like, you got to beat the, he literally beats the sense out of somebody. The, what's the hand thing? Oh, my signals and stuff. My, <laughs> my, my but, can't, but can't you get those stories out of Warner Brothers and Paramount? They're not going to be better than anime. I know that. Right. You're going to get the fights out of it. You're going to get real better fights, better art, everything. I get it, though. If you get your morals and principles from somewhere else, get it. But I, So my question I, most is... People I watch, most people I respect, that watch anime I are, are people you would be like, oh, yeah, I'll hang around him or... Oh, that's a cool person. I never, I've yet to see a dickhead who likes anime, <laughs> <laughs> or somebody, or somebody who's an asshole who likes anime. I've yet to see it. And you that's won't be saying this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> like listening to you talk about your personality. Yeah. Right, and even in the sense of somebody like Channing asking, okay, you like anime, and mm -hmm. you know, you talk about the different things you like to do. Does some of you not necessarily wanting to be very social have to do with not seeing or knowing a lot of people in our realm, right? In, in football that share a lot of your same interests? Oh, I got, a, we got enough. Got I enough. got enough of people, but it's still, you know, I, I socialize, but I'm still limited on how long I want to socialize for. Like my friends already understand. Just text me or call me if I answer. I'm going to answer. If I don't answer, it's not because I don't want to, you know, I didn't answer it because I don't want to talk to you. It's just I'm probably busy. My thing is on do not disturb on most of the time. Or I'm playing a video game that I'm really into and I be on for hours. And then I look at my phone and be like, oh, dang. But I'm going to get back to you. You know what I mean? So if you just understand, like, I'm still working on being a better friend. I promise you. I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on it. If you think I'm the friend that's going to check on you and text you, I'm not that man. I'm the, <laughs> I still wish you blessings from afar. Like, if you don't hear from me, I'm still wishing you blessings from afar. Don't ever think, oh, Jamal's not talking to me. He's mad at me. He don't, he, you know, he wishing bad things. No, I want you to be good over there. I want you, I want to respect people how I want to be respected. Leave me the hell alone. Let you be. That ain't, ain't going to work in a relationship. Which one? A relationship. Not, oh, you, a real you one? You can't not pick up your phone for two hours if your lady calls you. Oh, no. I picked that one up. 
So, <laughs> so somebody, somebody broke the rule now. Oh, I, hey. Well, she's doing things that y'all ain't doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> she has my full attention. <laughs> and she watches anime. And she plays video games. Yeah. I'm, that's, she's getting answered all the time. Just let y'all know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. she does all the stuff that he wants to do. So I, I respect that that's totally. Real. We about to start cosplaying and everything. Dress mm -hmm. up like Spider-Man. <laughs> Look at his face, he had. You like that one, don't you? Spider-Man's the first he one. He about to start cosplaying now. Me and my wife dabble in some See? <laughs> 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 so Spider-Man, what you got? I do you can dress up Spider-Man, Thor, whatever Marvel and is character she somebody? Like. Huh? Like, who is she? She's Spider-Woman? I don't know. I'm more like, I'll be Naruto. She could be Hinata. That's basically Naruto's wife in anime. That's not sexy. Naruto? Oh. Well, first of all, you don't even know how they're dressed. That's the crazy part. <laughs> you know nothing of how they're dressed. You just going off of the names right now. Oh, OK. You need to see how they dress. <laughs> Dude, this dude kills me. <laughs> you actually really like him. Oh, I love him. You really like him. We, would, we would be so me. tight. We'd be so tight if we played together. <laughs> you really but like your him. ass is crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm the crazy one. Listen, when you sit in the room with a crazy person, you'd be like, hmm? <laughs> you just the Spider-Man meme. Yeah. I'm pointing at you right now, like, hey, I know that. <laughs> this is awesome. Like 100 percent man. The fact that you found somebody on this show that interests you more than you interest yourself. That's this funny. is truly a this is a momentous moment in the pivot history. And I'm glad it happened. <laughs> We're going on a date. <laughs> oh, so let me with. get to a little football. You guys played together, um, and I want to say y'all were together for two 13-win seasons, correct? Yes, that you both were large parts of. And, you know, it's in the news. Aaron's going to go on a darkness retreat like Yuri Prochaska that fights in the UFC and all of these things. When you guys are on those runs and you're winning 13 games and you have an opportunity to get to Super Bowl, as young players who are a large part of that, did you ever see, or how did you see those runs ending for you? And how disappointing was it to be at home watching the Super Bowl? Uh, honestly, saw, like, vision it, us winning it, or being there in the championship game, you know, uh, especially the second year you get so, like, we felt like we were so close that first year. Uh, got to the NFC Championship, and then we are like, all right, we got pretty much everybody back. We know what we need to do. We ready for this. And then we got to the same point, and didn't happen and so it was a lot of disappointment a lot of hurt i i think after the second one i didn't watch football for a little while like i didn't watch the playoffs none of that i was i was just hurt like man because you know you put so much into it you pour your heart into it like you said the off seasons those is long and you just you put everything into it to come up short um it, it just it hurts and there's no way around it you know but you i, th I think it will be better for it at the end of the day, you know, uh, sometimes you got to fail before you succeed. And, and that's what I just chalked it up to. For you, Ma, like, because you seem like you handle things a little differently. Me? What do you mean? And he says he had the vision yeah. of being there and the sadness that sets in on you when you don't accomplish those goals. And we already know you weren't a good enough friend to reach out to him and see how he was doing oh. Oh. during that time. <laughs> But we was we was get all our stuff together. Hey, yeah, we was right there. We, we <laughs> next to our neighbors. How did you kind of deal with those losses and those seasons ended uh, in disappointing fashion? Man, you just gotta chalk it up with your head up high. But at the like at the time it was happening, oh, it just pissed, you know, because all that hard work you put in for that season is just end right there. Even in the game, I feel like we didn't even <clears throat> get in there how we really want to. I feel like if we actually did everything right and we still lost, all right, I get that. But I feel like we even put our best foot forward in those games. And I think that's the only thing that be irking me. So now that, you know, I, when you look at it in the past of what happened, I just try to put it into the future and try to tell the young dudes now that we, now since we old vets now, you know what I mean? Since we old vets, we tell the young lids. I just try to tell them about the past experience of those two years going, you know, to the NFC Championship game twice, you know, twice and still losing it twice. It sucks. So. Right. I just put it into my, my burning motivation of just trying to be great and just use it as fuel, really. And, and this year, the last game of the year for you guys, 
leading up to that game? Did you guys call each other? With the implications, you know, and how important that game was. Hey. <laughs> Did you guys call each other and then after the talk, game? I ain't talked to Jamal. No? My mom, my mom talked to Jamal. She did. All of, and like, she was leaving during shit the week. Me. Like, Jamal's sister come and stay with us for the game. Because we, we was just like one big family. She walked in the house where Jamal went. I said, Mom, she... You can't let her in my house like that. <laughs> but then it's my, that's my sister too. And yeah. she, black shirt in the front and didn't say nothing in the back. I'm like, that's my, my, my dog. Okay, that's yeah. your brother. I understand. But uh, no, nah, I was like, Mom, I, ain't, I ain't talking to him. I talked to him after the game. Like, that's still my dog, but this is this business. It's going to take everything for us to get into this playoffs. Like, right. yeah. We knew what kind of team they was, and we knew they weren't going to come lay down. They beat us earlier in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Even if they would have won, they couldn't get it. So they right. had nothing to lose. Seattle, right. So, you, you you don't really want to see a team where they ain't got nothing to lose with some dogs on it who ain't going to lay down. Right. And we, we knew we knew that's what we was getting in them, man. And they just, you know, they just bought it. And uh, I think it's good for our division, you know. Uh, well, it is great for you guys' division. division. But you also mentioned the business of the game. You guys are year six. I think you just yes, completed sir. year six. Uh, in 2021, you lost Jamal to the Lions business. And now... You potentially gonna lose Aaron Rodgers, someone else who's been family the past six years. You 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 think about that that he might not be there next year when you guys start training camp. Uh, I thought about that the last three off season. He ain't know mm. if he was coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a bit more intense. No, right? no, it definitely is, and it uh, it resonates with me because A, a Rod has uh, played like a huge part of my my career. Uh, we was. I, we were two of three backs. That was, we had another back that was drafted with us. Uh, and I remember week one, I wasn't even active, I, not even special team, nothing. And uh, my first game, it was when the game Jamal went down, I came on the field and, uh, and I was like, I'm one of your biggest fans in this organization. And to never have taken an offensive snap but to hear that from a future Hall of Famer, it does a lot for your confidence. And then just at certain points, I wouldn't be in the game. I wouldn't be playing. Um, A-Rod turned to the sideline and told Mike McCarthy, I want 33 in the game. I want 33. They call the timeout, I want 33. And so just for somebody to believe in me and trust in me that much, and then when I do get that opportunity, I make the most of it and make him look good, you know. He definitely has played a huge role, and I'd hate to see him leave. Uh, he's a great leader, and uh, that's, that's my guy. And Jamal, would you go on one of those ayahuasca retreats with uh, A-Rod? I tried once. Oh, yeah? Jane, you come with me? Yeah, we're going. All right, cool. If, he, if you go with me, I go with you. Real I talk, I, I'm interested. <laughs> you See, I sat up. Crazy. Crazy. You I interested up. too? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm trying to figure out what it is, I'm low curious. key. Yeah. We just in the dark? I mean, I don't know. That's different. That's the shrooms. Oh. Yeah, yeah. that's the hallucinogens. No, no. Ayahuasca is like the <laughs> enlightenment therapy that, where they go on retreats. They get in the dark and they kind of just take whatever it is. No, you do. But it's the ayahuasca. Yeah. And they kind of... This open up and they, it just changes them. I think Mike Tyson told us he Mike tried Tyson it. Mike Tyson did it. Will Deontay Smith. Deontay Wilder said he yeah. went. He did it. That's all like a uh, different form of shrooms. Yeah, you hallucinate and they say you see Aaron different go, things. <laughs> Look, Mama said, "Hell no." Mama said, "Hell no." Mama like, "Nah, you know, she say she ain't with it." We raised this boy too good at Mercedes. Shout out to Big Shout uh, out to Big Dog. Boys, yeah, no. he, I talked to Mercedes trying to give a few nuggets. Now he shared with me your upbringing in the military and you know how humble you are and the fact he credits that to your parents and how you are yes, yes sir, no sir, even with the coaches. I and mean, we like to pivot and go back. How tough was it growing up in a military household, moving from place to place? I think I saw Germany in there. Uh, obviously, landing in Texas, few other places. How, how, what was that like as a kid? Uh, it, w it was fun moving around. You know, I got to see a lot of different things. I lived overseas. Uh, I feel like I could adapt to any culture because of that. Uh, just pick up and change things that happen fast. I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, it was, it was fun growing up. Uh, like I said, the hardest part was just sports-wise, picking up and having to go prove yourself again or go make new friends. I got friends all over the world because of that, and uh, it it gave me a lot of discipline. The military, uh, it was a lot of yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, mm -hmm. yes, sir, no, sir. No coach had to pull me off the field. It'd be my parents if I if I ain't make the grades. If I ain't, uh, uh, it's them. It don't even gotta be a report card coming out. You get an F on your test or something like that. It was strict, but 
they still let us be kids as long as we do what we're supposed to do. Um, you know, you come home, you do your homework first before you go to practice, all of that, or you go outside. You're using your manners, yes ma'am, no ma'am, you're good at school. Just uh, being a, pretty much being a representation of, of your parents when they're not there. And the crazy thing is the yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. I'll talk to people for 30 seconds and they'll never, I, they don't know nothing about me, right. but they'll compliment my parents. They'll be like, your parents did a great job raising you. And I think that's the best compliment I can, I can get because I think so much, think the world of my parents. Right. And uh, I'm like, you guys don't even know me, but you give them that compliment. So right. military has been huge in my life. And uh, I, I thank my parents for that. It changed their lives as well. You made me feel old as shit in the kitchen. Like, yes, sir. I'm like, what? <laughs> you, you aren't young. <laughs> Aha. Aha. Where's the spoon? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not old. I didn't say that. I'm not old. How old are you, Brett? I'm 47. Oh, yeah. I just turned 47. You did. What do you say? Ah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. He, he yeah. rubbed his knees. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You, you know, I, I like, I, I always <laughs> tell these boys, I say I'm seasoned. <laughs> I'm seasoned. Old, old, old shit you throw away. That's the <laughs> you know that's that's old excuse me, guys. Talking about Detroit. Right, talking about your personality again. It's just messing with you now. Mm -hmm. Dan Campbell, he can't be like we saw on TV all the time. It's no way. He is. That boy crazy. All day long, he's that excited. And it, it, it goes, it works over well with the team. <laughs> yeah, sometimes <laughs> that boy be in the middle. Well, he be like in front of the, the whole team and he say something, like he say something motivational, getting y'all ready to go. And then he'll just say something just random as random as shit. <laughs> it just it'd it, it be like he'll say it right after and be like, "All right, let's go." And just have you think from it like, uh, "All right, let's all right, let's go get it, let's go yeah. get it." But he having us motivated. He has us motivated. Then he just do something real funny, just to get us loosened up because he understands like he brings out the best in us just for you know them late being in late season. When, when was y'all done with pads? We fifteen. We were still going. Nah. And he was every I'm day. I'm telling the PA. <laughs> he was there. I'm we telling was, the PA. That's against the rules. We was in there. We was in there using our That's why they came out in week 17 and thumping. <laughs> <laughs> we was using our show, all our show to pass. And honestly, I thank DC for it just because he's just giving that motivation. You need that. You need those days of when your coach is pushing y'all. You just be like, man, I just want to chill today. But you need that <clears throat> to get you going. It's just a... I think it's just a mental thing. And I feel like it helps more of the young players too, just to let them know like, you in the league, but you ain't you ain't here forever. This ain't college. Like y'all gotta bring, you gotta bring the oomph every day. This is your job, you know? And I feel like DC does a job, does a great job of when you see that level is low, of picking it right back up and getting us back to work again. You know, he had you guys, one, in his first year, everybody competed. You know, y'all just couldn't get over the hump, whether it was a turnover, not getting a defensive stop. And then you don't start this year great, but you did become a star this year. Uh, I think a part of why the team was on was the head coach, but hard knocks. You know, you're, you're someone who became a star, and that was the breakout personality. And then you fast forward. I hate to bring this back up for Aaron. You fast forward to the last game of the season. I think my opinion is that Barry Sanders is the greatest running back that I've ever seen play football. Mm. You score 17 touchdowns, which breaks his team record of 16. And then after the game, you had an emotional interview. And I felt like from watching you at the beginning of the season in Hard Knocks become the leader of that team, the emotional foundation of that team to finish and play in the season as well as you did after you and your uncle said, we're going to set a plan to be smaller, to be quicker, to be more explosive, and then have that emotion where you're showing love and appreciation for someone who meant so much to you that you had lost. Speak to a little bit of what this season was like for you, because it seemed like a whole journey within 18 weeks of football. Uh, it's been emotional. It's been a lot that's just been happening. Um, these these last couple of years in general. But this year, too, is just, I lost both my great-grandparents. Grateful to have, still have them alive when they were alive. They both died at 92. And they just both passed away this, this year, which was a lot to handle for me. But at the end of the day, I, I'm just grateful for them to just be there. And, and I lost um, 
I just lost a lot of people in these last two years. So from my dad, from Aaron's dad, to my two grand grandparents, is it was a lot that people wouldn't understand because you know all they see is me smiling. But it was a lot going behind the scenes of <laughs> crying, of learning how to grieve, just see what my emotions are. And at the time when they when I hear them pass. And I couldn't really cry. I couldn't cry. I couldn't really grieve at the time. But I felt like at the end of the season, the last game, you know, working hard, um, they gave me those, the balls after the game and just my emotions of working hard, the off season, running hills, sweating, throwing up 120 degree weather. And I do this in the off season because I, I want to be great. Write my goals down and be able to get those goals and then at the end of the year, you know, not make playoffs, but still finish the season strong. And because I didn't know nothing about it, I promise you. I didn't. I told them, don't tell me shit about if the Rams won or not. I don't want to know. I just want to go out here, play this game for my teammates, make sure my mind is focused on the the task at hand right now. But at the end, when they they told me, I was just a lot of it just came over, and I, it just made me want to just look up and understand that they're all so proud of me and how hard I work and I'm my biggest critic because I put a lot on my shoulders. I put a lot of weight on there that I feel that really don't need to be there. But I do that just because I, I want to be great. I want to be the, the, that great man. I want to be a great husband. I want to be a great brother. I'm, I'm trying to be the great person that I know I can be. And I just, I'm trying to do it for them. And it just felt great at the time. That, me crying was me showing my, my tears of joy for them, my tears of joy of celebrating their lives and just me just trying to represent them in the right way. And I felt like I did wonderful in that game. I felt like finally I could finally give myself credit of saying I represented them the right way. I worked hard. Now my curse is I'm never content. I'm never satisfied with that. Now let's bump it up more. Let's make a new goal. Let's, yeah. let's get even more hungry. Let's show people what even more we can do besides just, you know, scoring on the goal line. We can do way more than that. We can yeah. ball out. Now I'm learning how to take their energy and take what they given to me and not keep it on my shoulders as a, a burden of, I got to do it because if, if I don't do it, they're not going to love me. They ain't going to love me from above and stuff. But now just take what they give me and understand that good or bad, as long as I go out there and give my all, give my effort, that they'll be proud of me no matter what. Now that's, that's beautiful, man. And the curse of getting older is that we lose people yeah. that are close to us. Um, my parents are in their mid sixties and I had to ask my mom was going to funerals her new profession. You know, because every weekend she would just say, you know, it was this, it was this person she knew and that person she knew. And I think what's beautiful about what you did is in your success, in your in your walk, you got an opportunity to honor them to the point where I knew about them. Mm. And I think that's what's special about what we get to do and the fact that people admire us and the fact that it matters you know like even today like you're taking these pictures and you're talking to people people are going to see y'all and ask for those things and very often i'm asked does it get boring i mean or does, does it get annoying right and i always tell them i could always do a job nobody cared about right you guys do something that people care about but there's the the negative that comes with that there's the pressures that we put on ourselves there's the goals that we set that we want to reach you know You've already been a pro bowler. You have broken a, a record in Detroit. But we know this game is about what we could do individually and as a team. For you right now, Aaron, with everything that you've accomplished, now in the backfield with AJ and, you know, a team that may be going through some changes, what are the goals you have set for yourself and where do you see yourself going from here? Number one is win a Super Bowl, uh, be a Hall of Famer, that's career-wise. Uh, but just continue to grow as a leader. I, I got the C on my chest this year for the first time, which was uh, huge for me. Uh, so proud of myself for that. But, um, you know, just keep bringing guys under my wing and lead, lead them the right way. And, you know, just continue to elevate, you know, each year, make it bigger and bigger. I haven't finished first in rushing yards. So that's, that's one of my goals. You know, Jamal, you've shared the backfield with good backs in both places. Uh, 
you know, Aaron showing himself a great back, but also DeAndre Swift in Detroit and, and what he's able to do in the way that you compliment him. You mentioned being able to do it all. Like, I'm not just the guy you give the football to when we get on the goal line to punch it in. I can do other things. You and your uncle worked to be that mm. in the off season. So for you, what's that next step? And also, what's that next step for Detroit? The next step for me, honestly, eating better during the season. Because during the season is when, you know, I'll be, I be doing good, but I know I can do so much better if I get my diet right. <laughs> I was laughing because I remember I, I called I call Jamal. This is he, he had I just got to Detroit. Night, He's been there probably two, three weeks. But Jamal, crazy. what's up? How you doing? Good, bro. I can't stop eating this fried food, bro. Girl, catfish. I can't, <laughs> fried catfish. Like, you know we don't got none of that in Green Bay. And I, I, so he said that. As he said. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I had to try to get used to was the dieting part. But now, like, next year is... I come, I'm about to take it to a whole new level. This is the year that I know. You know how people make resolutions? Sometimes they don't go with them. But for me, this is my resolution of just getting better with my diet and understand, like, now's the time I can turn it up even more. Now's the time I know in my head mentally, you know, people want to put me in a box of what I can do. And I just like proving people wrong. So, like, I'm getting back to, like how you say, the receiving and stuff. I got, I want to get back to receiving. I want to get back to running option routes. I want people to be afraid of me, not just me running the ball, but me in the slot or me just running, you know, option routes in general, catching the ball, you know? And I miss, I miss that a lot, you know? Just being at Green Bay, we was, we was running routes yeah. and practice all the time, you know? And so that's one of the things. And when you go to a different team, you know, things are different, so. But I feel like that's something that I got from Green Bay is something I need to always keep with me and put it into my agenda and my training the regiment all the time and mm -hmm. just keep it with me no matter what. Shoot, I might be running routes in the off season, getting better than this, and they might not use it, but at least they know. I'm going to tell them, shoot, if you want some routes run, <laughs> your boy is right here ready to go. You know? Right. I'm going to let them know because as long as I'm working on it and you know how you feel, you work on something so much, and you get comfortable with it, you're going to talk about it and let coaches know, let me get that, you know? And, you know, coaches be scared to run certain things if they don't trust you about it. And, you know, for me, I just want the opportunity. So off season, doing my thing, recording it. Like I used to show, I used to send A-Rod uh, me running routes. And he used to love that job. He's like, hey, keep working on them things. Like my last year with us, that's all I worked on was routes. Making sure you understand, like, to be versatile, you know? Don't let them put you in a box. And that's when I, I just hate somebody think they know me. I'm like, you don't know me. I go to sleep with myself every day. What you know about me? <laughs> Backs watch backs. And I'm listening to you guys talking about the things that, you know, you plan to do, you know, going forward. But I know in, in the present, I was always a fan of my, my contemporaries, right? Mm. And uh, for me, like, Ladanian was my favorite back mm. while I was active, and I was one of the top backs. Who is that guy, you know, for, for each of you? Oh, mine's is easy. Mm. You, should, you should know what mine is, too, because you know how the way I like to run. Current back right now? Yeah. There's only one you should really think of. Derrick Henry? Thank you. Yeah, you already do. Yeah. Yeah. You could argue Nick Chubb in that too. Well, that too. Yeah. Well, definitely Nick You're right. Chubb. Yeah. Nick Chubb. Definitely but Nick I'm, Chubb. I like Derrick Henry. It's just too easy. I just like I just like how afraid defenses be running with him. <laughs> 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 or the ones that really be in there, they, yeah, they be trying so hard. I love it so much. I guess we can extend it to the top five. Top five running backs? Top five backs. The backs, your, your favorite five. Ooh. Uh, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubbs, I like uh, Joe Mixon. I ain't gonna lie. I like all the Philadelphia running back. Mm -hmm. yeah, they just all great. Yeah. Uh, do that count for four or that count for five? Yeah, whatever you want. You got one more. <laughs> Go, one more. Give me one more. I like JT, Jonathan Taylor, when he, mm -hmm. when he goes. official. Yeah. What you got, here? I got Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, of course. Uh, Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Saquon. Yeah. Yeah. No CMC? I mean, I feel like I do the same thing as him. That's what I was asking. That's, yeah, just, that's what made, but that's just, what made me ask. I feel like I just don't get the respect. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I've done the same things as him. All right, but he has gone 1K, 1K. So. Tony style. Pollard. Yeah. I like Tony oh, Pollard. Yeah. Yeah. I like Tony yeah. Pollard. That's yeah, a good he do, one. It, it, and he got juice. Hasn't said nothing. Just mm -hmm. slowly, slowly, slowly. Like, you know, just making the most of his opportunities. What I said, right. 
You don't know, never know when they're gonna come, but when they come, you make the most of it. And that's what I, I even sent them a message. I said, make it hard for them to take you off the field. That's what you're doing now, and make it make it that way. And so Tony Paul, I got a lot of respect for him too. And G just do, did it the right way, you know. He ain't, yeah. he ain't in the media. I should be playing. I should be doing this. When he got his opportunity, he went and showed it. No, that's real. I, I thought he was amazing this year, and I think he was the difference in what 100%. they were able to do offensively. When he got the rock. It's just a different level Explosive. of explosiveness yeah. uh, that offense had. This is usually Fred's question. I'm surprised he hasn't asked it since we're close to the end. Would you like to ask it? No. Okay, I'll ask <laughs> it. You know, <laughs> both of you guys have, have gone through adversity, and you know, the show is called The Pivot. So we like to figure out, like, what's your, what was your biggest pivot? Like, what was the moment in your life you had to accept, adjust to, and be able to move forward from that's going to, in some way, uh, define you as you move forward? Uh, I think it was losing my father. Uh, you know, my dad's been there every step of the way, never missed a football game uh, from, yeah, never missed a football game. Even NFL, he was there every every week. My mom was. Um, so just, you know, I said he was he was our rock, and I would always have a moment with him before the game. He would be in the whatever end zone we was warming up in. He would find his way down there. We'd shake up and have that conversation. I'm proud of you. You've been working your whole life for this. Now go tear this motherfucker up. <laughs> and uh, yeah. just going out there and playing football it was so hard for me to play football. I think I lost my dad, what, uh, 11 days before my son's first birthday. And then probably a month later, I had to go back up there for OTAs. And for me, it's no excuse, you know. I'm not gonna miss, I'm not gonna miss none of that. I'm gonna be up there with my guys putting in the work. The other part was leaving my mom behind. You know, that was that was tough for me. And then just playing football that whole year, like I remember week one, I'm out there trying like national anthem and I'm just crying like a baby, like thinking about my dad. I'm like, like snap out of it. You gotta go play football. You gotta play football. Then I look in the stands, I see my mom, my brother, and them, and I'm my dad's not here. And it was it was just so hard for me to play that year. I still played. I had, you know, that's what you got your teammates for. Got uh, training staff, all those people to, there to lift you up. I made it through the year, and this year it was a lot easier to play ball. I can't say I'm 100% like over that or uh, gotten past that, pivoted past that, but uh, I'm taking the steps and, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard losing somebody. I've never, that was like my first loss ever losing somebody. So, and then somebody so like special and close and dear to me, the reason I play football, yeah. things like that. So, um, I would say that was probably the biggest adjustment of my life. And then also I was, my parents made it easy for me just to go play football, be a kid, oh, like not a kid anymore, man. What you mean? But uh, once my dad passed, I promised him that I, I'd take care of the family forever. I, I got I got your wife, I got my mom, I got our queen, you know? And uh, so just growing in that aspect of being a man, taking care of the whole family, you know, uh, it was even, like, even easier having them there when I got the little one, you know, him and mom, they got them. Now you got, got to drop some of those things and be there, you know. So just that, but um, I'm proud of you, mom. I love you. You've done a great job. And yeah, I, just, I would say that that's been the hardest part. But but guys like this, hey, yo, there hey, for me don't as bring well. that compliments this over man, here. This man, this man. He, 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 he came to the funeral. I didn't expect Jamal to come. He came. My boy showed up clean. I don't dress up. Yeah, he don't dress up. So <laughs> something about it was. It just it, that's when it showed you that it's who's real. with you is with you. Your family's here with you, and it's okay. They got you. You know. And I think the most impactful one, and the first one that that started it off first was was his dad first, and I never been to a funeral before, and my first four years um, with the Packers. I thank Mama Jones, I thank the whole Jones family for just such genuine, kind people to, at the time where, you know, him, Mama, the family all at the house. I'm in my house by myself, none lights off everything. I hear do, 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 do. I'm like, who the world is knocking on my door right now? It's Mama Jones and Papa Jones is really just, hey, just come to check in. Are you good? You need anything? You know, you need food, you know, here's a plate. I'm like, thank you, you know, I don't, you know, I'm just chilling in my own house, just, that's just how I be. But I'm just thankful for y'all to just accept me for who I am. Um, I'm dealing with a lot and 
just to been able to entwine with your family, your mom and your dad, and to see the type of people you guys are, and just accepting me, my sister, you know, my family, and just to be, you know, like we we came into a league, you know, the business. I mean, people don't really, I wouldn't think, make these type of relationships so quick, but I'm just grateful to have y'all to go into this business with and to learn so much from y'all about just genuine love, just learn about people who love each other, but literally are doing it out of love and not because they want something from you. It's just great to see it from, I see it from y'all, and y'all started with the positivity because I feel like the more positive people you bring, the more blessings you bring, the more positive people you have, that that's the type of energy you're going to bring towards you. And y'all the ones that started it, man, I got, you know, I got family members there aren't even my blood that I, that I feel like they have my back no matter what. I got my Utah family. Um, they had me when I was in BYU, you know? I always meet certain people in my life that aren't my family, but they treat me as family. And they don't see me as the football player, they see me as Jamal Williams. And I just wanna appreciate y'all so much, you, man. Bro. Like this is my pivot of just finding out there are good, genuine people out in the world who just love you for who you are. And I just love you so much for that, man. <laughs> I can't. I, my dog. We, know, we don't have a lot of opportunities to do two individuals or have two guests at one time. And I remember when we started talking about it, I was like, man, but Aaron's so dope. And he has such a great story. I was like, we could get a, we could do a whole show with him. <laughs> and I was like, and Jamal, he has this great personality and we could do a whole show with him. And I'm thinking of that content. I was like, that's two great shows, but Watching him talk to you and forget that the rest of us were in the room and thanking you and your family for your relationship, we 100% absolutely were blessed that y'all did this show together. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you. The game brings people together, but I say this all the time. All your friends ain't your teammates and all your teammates ain't your friends. And, I, and it seems that y'all know that, but the thing is, if you find somebody who is, that's a very special thing in our world because it's so hard to find. So, man, y'all hold on to each other, man. Keep having one another's back. Truly, truly thank both of you for sitting with us. This was really amazing, man. I learned a lot about both of you young brothers, and I wish y'all nothing but the best. Yes, sir. Can I say so? You say whatever you want, uh, man. I'd like to give you your flowers. Uh, how you handled that situation, DeMar Hamlin, thank how you, you got on the, uh, on the air just like that. You know, you protected us. You're speaking for us as well, and you just did a – Amazing job. I Thank was like, I, I was sitting there like tearing up, like, damn, that could be us in any second. My mom's sitting there, you good? You good? And I'm like, yeah, it's just, you know, you don't see that all the time. So for you to be able to just go up there and, and speak and, you know, that gave me some reassurance and like, ooh. So I just wanted to give you your flowers. Man, that was amazing that, what you man. did. I, I don't think a lot of people could get up there and do that. No, it was, thank you, man. That was a blessing. You're Appreciate welcome. that. Well, appreciate y'all, boy, appreciate man. Y'all ain't gonna make me cry, though, my boy. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. That was awesome. Man. Uh, man, that was man, awesome. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate Hold up. Limitless. Bigger stomach guy pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Bigger stomach guy pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up.